<sighs> Where do I even begin? What is going on everybody? My name is Earl here and what I have in front of me is an old early 2009 MacBook that I just finished disassembling to put in the new body. Now long story short, this MacBook is pretty much broken and so what I wanted to do was grab that logic board right there to put it on this beautiful black MacBook shell and we all know these older 2008-2007 black MacBooks can only go so far when it comes to operating systems because of their 32-bit EFI. So what I essentially did was transplant this 2009's logic board being this one's already broken to begin with except for the logic board and just moved it to the black MacBook. Now my issue here is that <laughs> I made this video unboxing it, opening the this old, dusty, broken, white 2009 MacBook here. Went through the disassembly process, recording it, spending hours of trying to see if I can make some insight on this topic or this project, only to realize I accidentally, permanently deleted my whole video for my YouTube. And yes, the whole project itself, the amount of footage I have uh, in 4K uh, just completely disappeared. All I have are thumbnails and so you guys are just gonna have to bear with me here. I've lost almost half of the project's uh, videos or clips which is so unfortunate. I tried recovering it, I tried doing everything I can and to no avail. Quite a bit disappointed in myself. I've been eyeing on this project for such a long time. It's just the fact that my OCD uh, wanted to delete everything on my desktop uh, to start another project and guess what? I never recovered from that. I've slept about four hours total today because I tried recovering everything. I stayed up all night. I'm just gonna cut it to the chase. I still managed to get half of the footage back. So that means uh, you guys still are gonna see a good part of it. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get on with it. All right, everybody. I've officially disassembled the old logic board from this black MacBook and you can see it's completely empty shell. And this is the 2009 logic board right here. You can see there's a couple of differences so I'm gonna have to figure out the differences and see if I could trim or any pieces that needs to be trimmed out in order for the 2009 logic board to work on this black MacBook right here. For the most part there's a couple of cables that are different like this one right here, different places, especially the heat sink which hopefully would not cause any problems but overall we'll see what happens. What I'm worried about is just making sure I have all the clearances in the world for the 2009 logic board to fit. Here we go. First things first, there are a couple of differences right here. I'm gonna be very gentle with this one because there is a speaker at the very top. Here's an update right here. So there are a couple of incompatibility uh, things that I had to keep in mind. And so I used the 2009 early MacBook here as a reference to see where the cables go and whatnot. And there are a couple of things that are similar in this and completely different from the early 2009 one. And number one is definitely this battery right here. So there's really no use for this on the early 2009 model. So I just taped it right here and you can see I got rid of the disk drive because on the black MacBook it wasn't really working anyway. We're getting into the final stages of this project. I'm about to install the MX4 thermal paste right here. I have put a bit too much. It's better than nothing, right? Now here comes the challenging part and that is installing the heat sink because we're going to have to figure this out. There are a couple of screws here that are not compatible with the 08 MacBook as well as the early 09 MacBook because the die is switched slightly to the left. This is an 08, this is an 09 heat sink. You can see there's quite a bit of a big difference. You can see that clearly. As long as we make a contact on the CPU, I don't think it's going to be a problem at all. I've installed the heat sink and it seems like it's pretty snug and good fit. I did tape a lot of the surrounding areas right here just to minimize all the clutter. These pre unibody MacBooks, the wires are just everywhere and I don't want them to land on the heat sink or anywhere hot. Let me go ahead and plug this keyboard. There you go. We're just gonna put this here for now. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. Oh, we got a red light right here, or a green light, I meant. Let's press the power button. Does it boot up? 
Yes! Look at that, the early 2009 black MacBook. And that's a good sign right there. That just means we just need to install the hard drive. Well, we need to screw all these gazillion screws back in first. After finishing up and cleaning everything on my table, after all those miscellaneous screws and whatnot, this pre body MacBooks are definitely something when it comes to screws. There's like a gazillion of them. But now that I have finished, I have cleaned up everything. And this is what it will look like as a final product. Essentially, you could run Sonoma on this computer, but what I have here is a Samsung Evo SSD with Monterey as well as Big Sur. Now, this is very similar to the late unibody MacBook uh, Play Carbonate. It's just this has a DDR2 RAM and, and has a lower clock speed core to duo instead of the uh, 2.26 gigahertz from the unibody. Let's go ahead and plug in this Samsung Evo right here and you can see how easy it is to just plug in just like that. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and type my password here and show you guys that it's fully functional, 110%. And we got the brightness here, despite not being the very brightest. These pre-unibody MacBooks do not have any IPS technology. They have a TN panel and over the years, they become visibly dimmer over the course of a decade or something like that. And these MacBooks are over a decade by now at least. Knowing that, these MacBooks just really do not last long with their displays, which is very unfortunate. Okay. Where do I get started first? Let's go ahead and check the uh, about this Mac right here and show you guys the specs. This has the base 2 gigahertz Intel Core Duo, which we already mentioned earlier before. We got four gigabytes of RAM. I believe you can expand this up to six gigabytes of RAM. I don't really have any DDR2 laying around with that capacity at the moment. So four gigabytes is not too shabby. And honestly, the overall this experience of this MacBook is not that bad. One more thing, let's go ahead and check system reports because this aftermarket battery is actually holding some charge. So you can see there's no cords here. And it only has about 10 cycles, which is fantastic. I really thought the whole time this thing was dead, but no, this was not used at all. Now there are a couple of quirks with OpenCore Legacy Patcher on this computer. Number one was the fact that it would connect to Wi-Fi and it would not, it would connect, it would not. I solved that by applying updated patches, but for some reason on Monterey, it still wouldn't really work. Another thing is if I go here, I wanted tap to click because this trackpad isn't really what you call the best thing in the world. It actually is one of the worst things about this computer is that trackpad. And I wanted to go to trackpad and include tap to click and whatnot. And you can see it doesn't really detect options for the trackpad. But I did try to revert and apply all the patches in the world for this computer. And it seems like we're just going to have to leave this as is. Now we already love about the design. What about the usability of this computer? I'm using a Bluetooth mouse here because I am not a fan of that trackpad at all. First things first, let's go ahead and check out the Blackmagic speed test on this computer because I am curious. Oh, we're getting about 200 megabits per second or megabytes. Someone commented that saying it's not megabytes, it's megabits or megabits or megabytes, whatever. But we are getting very identical speeds to the late 09 unibody MacBook. So nothing has changed, especially for this Samsung Evo, which is pretty decent when it comes to speed, actually. You're still getting that SSD speed regardless. It's not going to be slow by any means necessary. I do have Geekbench here. I'm curious to see how much points we're going to get out of this CPU. We're gonna do CPU first and GPU. This 9400M graphics is definitely going to take forever. Let's go ahead and try CPU first. Now would be a good time to point out the temperature of this computer. So we're getting about, or I guess we would say we're hovering around 68 right now, which is a little bit on the warmer side of things, but that's surprisingly normal for a MacBook. I've seen this specific MacBook right here hovering around 70 degrees when I'm web browsing or searching like that, and it could even go up to like 85. 30 minutes in, wow. An astounding 212 single core score and 425 multi core score. So we scored 212. My goodness, we have to scroll all the way down here. It actually scored worse than a late 08 core 2 duo. But you do have to keep in mind this is the base model. So this is a 2 gigahertz version instead of the 2.1 or the 2.26 gigahertz that came with the Core 2 Duo. This took forever. This took almost 40 minutes to finish. Should I even bother with the NVIDIA 9400M? Looks like it's not working properly. Can't even run the GPU. <laughs> well, 
I'm gonna leave that as that. Now that we have finished the benchmark aspect of this video, we can start using the internet. Let's go ahead and go to YouTube because it's one way to find out if this MacBook is useful in 2024. So let's go ahead and look up myself so I don't have any copyright strikes. General, please. We're gonna... All right, so that's running 480p. Let's start with 720p and work our way up right here. So let's give it a couple of seconds to load. Okay. All right, so 720p is perfectly useful. Let's move on to 1080p. Oh, okay. That looks perfectly fine. I mean, frame drops here and there once we start scrolling up and down. You can see that right there. Honestly, you don't even need anything more than 720p or 1080p on this TN panel because first of all, this is a 1280 by 800 display. So anything more than that is just redundant. But hey, that's what we are, right? Let's go ahead and go to 4K. Let's go to the big four right here, play. And that's a slideshow. <laughs> yeah, you know what? 4K is not possible on this computer, but 1080p is surprisingly still available. Oh, we got ads. I forgot. I got ads now. I'm making money off of this YouTube. That's hilarious. <laughs> I was about to go crazy. I was like, I hate ads. I forgot it's my video. So yes to ads. <laughs> Look at that. Sounds really good. You know, I'm very impressed by the set of speakers this black MacBook has. I mean, I'm generally surprised it's that good. It's a bit on the tinny side of things, but I mean, what do you expect from a 2008 machine? Whew. Okay. You can see it's trying to catch up to my typing speed, which is hilarious. The keyboard is fantastic on this machine. This is really actually surprisingly one of the best keyboards. Here we go, second round. Level one, I am in space. Oh wow, that's a cool 60 frames per second. I can't even make it to the first level, that's ridiculous. Look at this. <laughs> Look at that. I'm getting into it. I'm definitely getting into it. And those speakers are, are pretty good. Oh, frame drops. Oh no, come on. No, don't do that to me. I almost made it. Oh, sh God, you saw that? <sighs> After just hours of using this computer, you could see there's a bit of an oil sheen on the top keyboard and the palm rest and whatnot. So you're definitely going to need something to wipe this off from time to time because yeah, that's not going to be a good look. Regardless, I think I had a pretty good time with this computer. And honestly, this is one of my favorite projects I've ever done in quite some time. We made this old outdated 2008 MacBook look like brand new with upgraded specs and Big Sur or Open Core Legacy Patcher. And it worked out. At the end of the day, this is a 2008 MacBook and the fact that we're able to use the modern internet with this is very surprising. I absolutely love that about Macs. I think one thing I could really just improve upon with this MacBook is just being able to upgrade the RAM a bit more. Even with six gigabytes of RAM, I don't think it's not enough still. I think eight is the new minimum now and this being capped at four, you could see a couple of hiccups with the memory swapping and whatnot. That's really the downfall about these older machines is that they just can't support anything higher than four, six, eight gigabytes of RAM. You can see right off the bat, just idling, it's using about two gigabytes of RAM. And so imagine just trying to surf the internet on Google Chrome or Safari, you start to see how it can really dwindle the performance of the computer because there's just not enough memory on it. And to top things off, this specific MacBook right here only takes DDR2, so it's just gonna be a lot slower than a DDR3 computer. It is what it is. I think this is still one of the best things ever created that map design just look at that look how gorgeous that looks anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe i really appreciate you guys watching these videos makes me want to keep pushing more for more videos so definitely more things to come i'll see you guys later peace out